Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about VLAN trunk ports. We covered access ports in the previous lecture. You saw in the example lab topology, we had a switch with some engineering and some sales PCs plugged in, which were in different IP subnets at layer three. We also put them into different VLANs at layer two, and that segmented the broadcast domains at both layer two and layer three, giving us better performance and better security. But what about the links between switches? So that previous example, we just had one switch there. The example here now is similar. We've got our engineering PCs, our sales PCs, and our router to route traffic between them, but they're not all plugged into the same switch. We've got multiple switches here. So if you look at Eng PC one if I also had another engineering PC plugged into that same switch, they would be able to communicate with each other. But the problem is that right now, all of my links between my switches are in the default VLAN one. So PCs in the same VLAN on the same switch can talk to each other, but they can't communicate with other PCs on another switch, even if that was in the same VLAN. So what we could do with help to help with this, we could configure those links between switches. We could put them in the engineering VLAN, for example. And great, now all of our engineering PCs can communicate with each other, no matter what switch they're on. But the problem is that the sales PCs still can't talk to each other. So we need PCs in different VLANs to be able to talk to with each other across different switches. And the way we do that is by configuring a trunk port. The protocol that's used for our trunking is dot one Q. So on the links between switches, rather than configuring them as an access port, which can only carry traffic for one VLAN, we configure them as a trunk port, which will carry traffic for all of our VLANs. So an access port carries traffic for one specific VLAN. Dot one Q trunks are configured on the links between switches where we need to carry traffic for multiple VLANs. The old or one of the old protocols that was available to do this was ISL, Interswitch Link. That was a Cisco proprietary trunking protocol, which is now obsolete. The industry is standardized always on using dot one Q now. The way that dot one Q works, when this switch forwards traffic to another switch over a trunk port, it tags the layer two dot one Q header with the correct VLAN. So in the packet, we've got the layer two header in there and it inserts into the layer two header, the VLAN information. The receiving switch will only forward the traffic out ports that are in that VLAN. And when the switch sends the traffic to an end host, it removes the dot one Q VLAN tag because our end hosts are not VLAN aware. They don't need to see that tag, it would confuse them. This is how the format of the ethernet frame looks. So up at the top there, there's the standard ethernet frame that comes into the switch from the host. When the switch sends it out a trunk port to another switch, it will insert the dot one Q tag into the header stating which VLAN this traffic is for. And again, it removes it at the other end when it sends it out to an end host. So let's look at how this works and um, we'll look at some broadcast traffic. So the sales PC2 down in the bottom left corner, it sends out some broadcast traffic. That hits its switch, switch one. There's no other sales PCs on there, so it doesn't send it to any other end hosts, but switch one is configured with a trunk port going up to switch two. 
So it will send the traffic up to switch two. When it does that, it's going over a trunk port. So it will insert the VLAN information into the layer two header. It says this traffic is for the sales VLAN. It comes into switch two and it sees that it's got the engineering PC on there, but it's in the engineering VLAN. So it knows the traffic is not for it. It doesn't send it there. It does have a trunk port. So it sends it up the trunk port to switch three. Again, it puts on the dot one Q tag saying this is for the sales VLAN. On switch three, we do have an end host in the sales VLAN, it's the router. The port connected to the router is configured as an access port in the sales VLAN. So the switch will send the traffic up to the router. When it does that, it's going out an access port, so it strips off the dot one Q tag. Switch three is also connected to switch four with a trunk port, so it will send the traffic down there. Again, it will tag it with the dot one Q tag, saying it's for the sales VLAN. When it comes into switch four, it's also got an end host configured with an access port in the sales VLAN. So it will send the traffic out there to sales PC one, strips off the dot one Q header. When it sends it down to switch five, that is again on a trunk port. So it will say that this is for the sales VLAN. Okay, so that is how our dot one Q trunks work. Now, just a little aside here, you don't need to know this for the CCNA exam, but you're going to run into this in the real world. So I wanted to mention it here as well. Your end hosts, like your normal desktop PCs, are typically members of only one VLAN and they're not VLAN aware. So for those hosts, the switch is configured as an access port. But a special case of end hosts is virtualized hosts like VMware or Microsoft Hyper-V, where there's virtual machines in different IP subnets on the host. So that one host that's maybe running a virtual machine for engineering, it's also running a virtual machine for sales. So in that case, you need to trunk the VLANs down to that host so it knows which virtual machine to send the traffic to. So you can see the example here, I've got a VMware host in the example. It's got virtual machines for both sales and for engineering. We've got one physical port on the ethernet switch interface fast ethernet zero slash one here, we configure that as a trunk port rather than as an access port. Okay, so where you've got normal end hosts, like a normal desktop PC or a normal server, which is running just one application on there, you configure your switch as access ports. When you've got ports going to another switch, you configure that as a trunk. When you've got a virtualized host, like a VMware host, that is also configured as a trunk. Another special use case is IP phones. When you're using IP phones, the switch is physically connected to the IP phone, and then the PC is plugged into the back of the phone for that particular user. The benefit that you get from this is it only uses up one physical port on your switch. So you don't have the phone and the PC both plugged into two different ports on the switch. You have the phone plugged into the switch and then the PC plugged into the back of the phone. Now, with this, we want to be able to segregate our phone calls from our data traffic, but they're both going through the same cable here. The reason that we want to have them separated is that we need to give different treatment to the voice traffic. We need to have that prioritized because it's very sensitive to delay. And the other reason is for security as well. We don't want our voice, our phone calls, and our data traffic in the same IP subnet and the same VLAN because that would make it easier for somebody to sniff that traffic and listen in to our phone calls. So we're going to have our voice traffic, our actual phone calls, and our data traffic on our PC. We're going to have those in different IP subnets and in different VLANs. And you can see here that they're both going through the same physical cable from the switch to the IP phone. So we need to configure that as a trunk port, which is going to carry the voice VLAN traffic and the data VLAN traffic. All right, 
but let's have a look at how to actually configure this. Very simple configuration. So the example here, interface fast ethernet zero slash 24 is connected to another switch. Optionally, I can put in a description. I've said description trunk to switch to. Then the trunking commands, I say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q and switch port mode trunk. Now with the switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q command, Modern switches only support dot one Q. So if you put this command in on them, it will give you an error message saying it doesn't understand the command. Older switches support both ISL and dot one Q. So on older switches, you have to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q because they'll default to ISL, but we always use dot one Q. On modern switches, there's no need to put that command in. But if you put the command in and it gives you an error message, it's okay, no harm done. Okay, so that's how we manually configure a port as a trunk port. I would need to configure this on the other side on the other switch as well. So that's how we do the configuration on a switch port, which is connected to another switch or to a virtualized host such as VMware. Another configuration to show you here is the special configuration where the switch port is plugged into an IP phone with a PC connected in behind that. The configuration here is, for example, interface fast ethernet zero slash 10. I've said description IP phone, and this port is going to act as a trunk port. It is going to be sending traffic for multiple VLANs, for the voice VLAN and for the data VLAN down to the phone, but we don't configure it as switch port mode trunk. We configure it as switch port mode access. So it is actually a trunk port, but you configure switch port mode access. It's a special case where we've got an IP phone plugged in. Then we say switch port access VLAN 10. That is our data VLAN and then switch port voice VLAN 20, here is where you configure the voice VLAN. When you've got a Cisco IP phone plugged into a Cisco switch, the switch will detect that it is an IP phone and it knows they both talk to each other. They know that this is the VLAN for the PC and this is the VLAN for the voice traffic on the phone. Last thing to tell you here is about the native VLAN the switch needs to know which VLAN to assign any traffic to which comes in untagged on a trunk port. That used to be required for when a switch was connected to a hub. Hubs are long gone, so you can't even buy hubs anymore. Hubs were layer one devices, so not VLAN aware. So that's why we have the, v the native VLAN there to support hubs. The default native VLAN is VLAN 1, but there's some security issues with using VLAN 1 as the native VLAN. There's some known attacks that can exploit that. So best practice is to change it to an unused VLAN. The native VLAN must match on both sides of a trunk, so on both switches that are connected to each other for the trunk to come up. So looking at the full config for our trunk, including setting the native VLAN, we need to create a VLAN for this first. So I've said VLAN 199 name native. This is a dedicated VLAN that is not going to be used for anything else. And you're not going to have any end hosts actually using this VLAN. Then on my port that's connected to the other switch, I've got interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one. Description trunk to switch to switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q switch port mode trunk. So the same commands we covered just a minute ago and then switch port trunk native VLAN 199 on the switch on the other side. I put in exactly the same configuration. To verify this, we use the command show interface gigabit zero slash one switch port. And here I can see that the operational mode is it's a trunk port. The encapsulation being used is dot one Q and the native VLAN is 199. It's saying inactive just because we don't have any access ports configured in VLAN 199. That's good. That's the way that we should configure it. The last thing that I want to tell you about here is limiting allowed VLANs. 
And similarly to changing the native VLAN, this is done mainly for security reasons, but it also improves performance as well. So you can see in the diagram here, on the bottom switch, I've got PCs in the Eng, Sales, and Accounts VLAN. But on the top switch, there's only PCs for Eng and Accounts. No Sales PCs on that top switch. So there's no point in sending sales traffic up to that top switch. And if we did, it would take up bandwidth, which would decrease performance. And also it could be a security concern. We don't want to send traffic anywhere where it's not actually required. So to prevent that from happening on the bottom switch, or actually on both switches, on that inter switch link between the two switches, we can configure the allowed VLANs list. So in the example, example here, we would allow traffic for the Eng and Accounts VLAN, but we're not going to send traffic for the Sales VLAN over that link. So the way that we configure it is go to the interface, which is the trunk, interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 for this example, and the command switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10 comma 30. If you don't use this command, then all VLANs that are configured on the switch will be sent over the link. By doing this, you limit it to only the VLANs that are required. Okay, that was the last thing for trunking. See you in the next lecture where we'll do it with a lab demo. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.